Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Maxcotech. In this short video, I'm going to show you how you can spin up a multi-node Kubernetes cluster on your local machine using Kind. So before starting, make sure you have following tools available. The first one is of course the tool that we are going to test named Kind. The second one is the kubectl, which is uh, the command line tool to interact with the resources within our Kubernetes cluster. Third is k9s, which is a command line user interface tool to interact with the Kubernetes cluster. This is the alternate for the Kubernetes dashboard, which is the visual UI in your browser. But I prefer this one is because it's quite lightweight and very easy to use. And last but not least, of course, you need Docker. Without going into too much details of how exactly Kind works under the hood, let's have a look at the highlights of what exactly it does in your local machine in order to form a Kubernetes cluster. So in your local machine, what Kind does is actually spins up multiple Docker containers and it joins each of the Docker container in such a way that it forms a Kubernetes cluster in which the first Docker container acts as the Kubernetes master node, whereas the rest of the containers act as the Kubernetes worker nodes. And then as usual, you can spin up multiple pods within each node. You can also configure kind to spin up multiple containers that is going to add more worker nodes in your Kubernetes cluster. But this of course depends on how much your local machine can bear depending on how much memory it has. So that's how our Kubernetes cluster will be formed within our local machine through kind. Now the second question is, we are going to run our business logics within these pods by providing our own Docker image. We can fetch these images from uh, different places. We have options like images hosted in the public Docker Hub, or we can also fetch them from uh, AWS ECR or Google GCR. But for simplicity, what we are going to do is actually spin up our own Docker registry at 5001 within our local machine and allow the Kubernetes cluster to fetch the images from this Docker registry. In this way, you can build your Docker file within your machine and push it to the local registry. And then Kubernetes cluster is going to fetch that from there and we're gonna run that inside your pod. So that's the plan. And let us go ahead and implement this and see how it works. So all we're going to use is this create cluster batch script, which is uh, pretty much straightforward to follow. The default cluster name will be kind, but you can change that from environment variables. And uh, first of all, it is going to spin up a Docker registry if it does not already exist. The address will be the local host and port will be 5001. Then there are some networking configurations going on. And then finally we have our kind config file. In our case, I'm setting up one main node, which is the cluster plane, which is required one. And in addition to that, I'm setting up one worker node, but you can feel free to add more worker nodes as you want but make sure the total nodes memory is within the limit of your Docker host, which in my case is almost eight GB, which should be good enough to spin up at least two nodes. So yeah. And then we apply config maps, which tells the kind to look for this local registry, which we have spinned up recently. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's spin this up and say create cluster so as you can see, it has uh, created a Docker registry container. We have uh, one container running for the registry itself. And then we have one main Kubernetes node with one uh, worker node and everything should be all set it up by now. And yeah, looks good. So we're going to test our cluster by a very simple Hello World app. Uh, it has uh, this uh, deployment manifest defined, which is using the Nginx image. And uh, we are exposing this port on port 80. Along with that, we have a service that exposes this deployment port on port 80. So first of all, we have to uh, make sure that this image is there in our uh, local Docker. So we say Docker pull Nginx. I already have it in my registry, so it shouldn't take long to download. Uh, so in this case, I'm using this uh, Nginx image, which is available publicly in Docker Hub, but you can build your own image locally with your own custom application and try to run it on Kubernetes. So, if, but for the sake of this video, we are just testing this image here. So once this image is there in your local Docker, we now need to push this image to our local Docker registry, which is hosted on localhost at 5001 port. So to do that, first we have to tag this image with the local Docker registry host. 
we have created another copy of this image uh, with a new tag as localhost 5001 nginx and now we are going to push this image to our local docker registry so docker push before pressing enter i'm also going to show you the logs of the docker registry and see what's happening inside so um, as you can see it's being pushed into our local docker registry so all looks good now our Kubernetes cluster will be able to pull this image from this local Docker registry. So in our deployment, we have mentioned this Nginx. So we are going to change this to localhost 5001 Nginx. And finally, we are going to deploy this Kubernetes create minus F hello world app. So it has created deployment and service for us. Uh, let's head over to our terminal and open the Kubernetes portal. And in this case, I'm using K9S. So as you can see, it's showing us the available nodes. So we can head over to uh, namespace. We have all namespace, so it should be deployed in default. Yep, so this is our Nginx uh, pod running. So now we can port forward this and uh, say Shift F. Uh, so the container port is 80 and we are going to port forward this to 8080 localhost and now if we head over to our browser localhost 8080 we can and voila we have first container up and running on a local multi-node Kubernetes cluster using local docker registry. So not to mention for those of you who are using Portman the installation and deployment procedure is slightly different. If you want me to show you how, how it's done on the Podman, please let me know in the comments below.